Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we will deploy our salary ecosystem to a web server. This might involve paying for the service, as just using the free tier, at least for me, did not work properly. I am deploying my application to Railway, which offers high performance at a low cost, is easy to set up, and has a great user interface. Here is how my architecture will look like. We will have six services running as individual instances. Beat, Flower, the main Django application, the Salary Worker, a Postgres database, and last but not least Redis as the broker, who handles the communication between the services and manages the task queue. All right, before we get started, a quick shout out to my new supporter on Patreon. A high five to Shariar. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Okay, and now without further ado, let's dive in. So I deployed my main Django application already to Railway. This is the web server I'm using in this tutorial and also connected it with a Postgres database. If you're not yet familiar with those basic steps, check out my tutorial on how to deploy a Django application. And if you decide to deploy your app on Railway as well, you might find this video useful too. Links to both tutorials you can find in the description below. Make sure to comment out the Redis connection before deploying it. We will add this later. Ok, let's check out the website so far. And first we will be greeted with a 404 page, because we have not created a message board yet. So let's go to the admin interface. Here to message boards, add a message board, and click save. Ok, we have now the message board with the ID number 1 created. Ok, let's go back. And the message board is now displayed. So let's subscribe. And so far so good. Now let's add a salary worker to send the email notification when a user posts a new message. So first let me run through my settings to py file here quickly. So I stole here environ to set up my environment variables. Then I declare here the environment. I set the environment variable temporarily to production to migrate to the Postgres database. We have an environment variable for the secret key. Then I'm switching here between debug is true and false depending on the environment. I added the domain to the allowed hosts and the whole URL to the CSRF trusted origins. I also added Cloudinary as my media server. I added white noise to the middleware to display static images. Here I'm switching databases depending on the environment. In my local environment I'm using SQLite 3 and in production I'm connected to the Postgres database with the database URL. I defined a static root for my static images and switch here between my local media folder and the Cloudinary storage for my media files. I have added environment variables for my email address and host password. And I commented out here my salary broker URL, which is pointing to my local Redis instance. Let's add Redis now in production. So I'm going to my web server, create a new service, so here to database, and add Redis. This will take a few moments to spin up and deploy. Once this is done, we go to variables and get the Redis URL. Then we add it to the environment variables. OK. Now in my settings to py file, I'm switching here between environments. 
So if I am in my local development environment, I'm using the local Redis instance, else I'm connecting to the remote Redis instance with the Redis URL. Okay, save this file, and let's push this change to the web server. Add a title, add it Redis, commit to main, and push. So all services in the Celery ecosystem will need this Redis URL information. And instead of adding it individually, we can define shared variables on the web server. I'm going to the settings for this project. Here we click on shared variables. To my production environment. And as you can see, I added here already all the variables I need to run this project. You can import all the environment variables at once by clicking the curly brackets. Just make sure to also change the value for the environment to production. Ok, let's add now Redis to this list as well. Ok, Redis is now added as well. And we deploy this change. Now that we have added Redis, let's create our salary worker. Here I create a new application with my GitHub repository. And to run salary with this service, we need to add the salary start command. So let's go to settings. We can also rename it to salary worker. And here in the deploy section, we have to add our custom start command. Ok, this is the command to run the salary worker. And then we also add our environment variables. So here I click shared variables and add all of them to the service. Alright, this application has now access to all the variables. And finally, we deploy the service. Ok, our salary worker is up and running, let's do a test. I post a new message, hello world, and enter. But the application failed. After some digging, I realized that the Django application has no Redis URL variable set up. So to add this Redis URL also to our Django application, I click on the share button here. And here I click on Django. And then update variable. OK. As you can see, all those variables are shared now with two services. And finally, I also have to deploy those changes. OK, the changes are updated now. Let's go back to our message board. And try again. And yes, now it worked. Awesome! Yes! 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 Let's check the inbox if the email notification arrived. And indeed, we got a message from the admin, hello world. Nice. Ok, next let's install Flower. I create a new service. Again for my GitHub repository. Add again the shared variables to this application. So add all. Then I'm going to settings. I change the title of the service to flower. And add my custom start command. 
this is the basic command. Then I secure this website also with a username and a password. So in my case, admin is the username and flower123 is the password. And I also have to add the port. And I'm using here the port variable the web server provides. Okay. Then let's deploy. And because we want to access Flower over the browser, we also need a domain. So we go to Settings, and here to Networking, and then we click here Generate Domain. It tells me here to add a custom port, 5555, and then Generate Domain. Okay, now that we defined a port ourselves, Let's update the start command so it works. So here in the command, I set the port number to 5555. And deploy it again. OK, let's check out the Flower interface. But we got the application failed yet again. Can you guess what the issue here is? If you're thinking of the allowed hosts, you're absolutely spot on. Let's change that in our settings to Wi file. So the issue is that we hard coded the allowed host to our main Django application. But this obviously will not work for Flower, which uses a different domain. But Railway can give us the domain dynamically. So I'm creating here a sites domain variable, which will take in the Railway public domain this is a variable Railway provides us. And I also add here a default parameter of blank. OK, then I add this site domain variable to my allowed hosts. And also to the CSRF trusted origins. With curly braces and convert it into an F string. OK. Save this file, and now we have to deploy it again. And as we can see on the web server, all three services are being rebuilt with the latest code now. OK, once this is done, let's revisit the Flower domain. Great, now we can access the page, and we're getting the login request window. Nice, Flower is up and running. Let's test this by adding a new message to the message board and also adding two more subscribers to see how it performs. OK, we have three subscribers now. Let's post a message. Testing Flower. And as we can see, this request was processed already. Three tasks completed successfully. And when we inspect the tasks, we can see the message which was sent and to which recipient. And when we look at the runtime, we see it was processed in no time at all. Let's double check if we got the email notification in the inbox. And here we have the message, testing flower. Awesome. OK, as last, let's add Pete to set up periodic tasks, like sending a monthly newsletter. I create here a new service, again from the GitHub repository. Then I add here again the shared variables, add all. Then in the settings, we add our custom start command. I also add the option to lock the information in the terminal with dash l info. And then I add the scheduler, which is our database scheduler. OK. And then we can deploy the service. 
Let's also rename the service to Pete. OK, once it's set up and running, let's test to schedule a newsletter. I'm going to my admin interface, then here to periodic tasks. Add a new periodic task, add a name, send monthly newsletter, I select the monthly newsletter task, then I add the cron tab schedule, and here I fill out the form so the newsletter is sent in the next few minutes. And save. OK, and now we can head over to Flower to see the execution. The task is active right now. And now complete it successfully. The June newsletter was sent to three subscribers. Great. And now let's check also the inbox. And there we go. Our newsletter was sent successfully. Awesome. As last, let's inspect the results database, which is set up to be our Postgres database. In my admin interface, I go to task results. And we can inspect here all the tasks which were completed. Nice. OK. This is how you can deploy a Celery ecosystem to Railway, and it should give you a general overview how the services are deployed to production. Thank you so much for watching and following along this tutorial, and I hope I will see you again very soon. Until then, stay curious my friends, and bye bye for now.